Cool, clean, quiet. Water cooling is peak. More core equals better. Join the Republic. The Republic of Gamers. Game now, work later. All terms that we've heard before. All terms that some of us live every day by. What if I told you that we can break free? I present to you these two computers and one costs $400 less than the other one. And if I were to set you down in front of both of them, I guarantee you, you couldn't tell the difference. The performance is functionally identical. They sound the same. They run just as cool as each other. Yet I still find you guys every day spending the extra $400 on your PC for almost nothing. This is how you min-max your PC. This is how you escape the Republic. <laughs> but there's absolutely no way you're wasting time with today's sponsor, Brilliant. Today, we are conducting highly scientific tests to calculate the best way to min-max your PC. And Brilliant teaches you how to properly science things. It is the funnest way to learn science, data science, computer science, whatever science you want. Brilliant gives you the tools to actually do whatever you want. And as much as I joke, like seriously, conducting scientific tests, I mean, it takes a lot of prep. And then there is another level of understanding that you need to have to be able to dissect it. We're looking at noise, thermals, clocks, performance, and the practicality of what's actually going into your PC to see if it matters. And Brilliant has so many lessons on data, scientific method, coding, that I challenge you to take these things and use them in the most creative ways that you possibly can. And it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or already adept in these things, Brilliant has their own creative ways to challenge you. So check out brilliant.org slash vex to get 20% off your first annual subscription and the first 30 days are completely free. Why not just start now? All right, let's get back into it. Water cooling versus air cooling. It's the age old question. Water cooling, I mean, it's, it's seen as peak. I mean, all these pre-built PCs use them. Everyone is building with an AIO. And once you've gone to custom water cooling, you've ascended. You've become the J's two cents of building PCs, the Linus tech tips. And on the more expensive computer, I called it the bougie buyer computer. We did actually go with a liquid AIO cooler, but this Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 is actually one of the most value-oriented liquid coolers that you can get right now. Like we could have gone a lot more bougie, like one with a screen on it that shows the rock whenever you look at your PC and he just like stares at you, you know what I mean? I don't know what people use those screens for, but on the budget system, we went with a big beefy air cooler that actually costs less than $35. And I have both of these. I just threw some cheap fans on the $35 one and at a full 200 watt load in Cinebench, the temperatures they were about the same. The performance was basically margin of error. Like one test could have been faster, one test could have been slower. I, I don't even know. And they sound extremely similar to each other. Just take a listen. But arguably, the liquid cooler could actually be more annoying because the pump makes this like buzzing sound. The, yes, the liquid cooler does have better temperatures, but most of the time when you're using your computer, you're not going to be running your CPU at 100% load. Like even I, I do a lot of production work and I barely ever max out my CPU. It's nothing like maxing out your GPU like when you game consistently. Your GPU is running at 100% most of the time. So what I did is I tried a 20 minute CPU limited stress test in Cyberpunk just to check it out. Here, both these were about the same. The performance was about the same. If I wasn't the one installing the CPU cooler, building the computer, and if I didn't actually see it, I don't think I would know what cooler is on the CPU. 
And what's bizarre is so many people think that they need an AIO liquid cooler or think that this cooler is going to be significantly better. And what's even more bizarre is the best selling CPU in the world and the best gaming CPU in the world right now is the Ryzen 7800X 3D. And I see it all the time. People think because it's the best CPU, it needs the best cooling. But what's funny is it only draws 80 watts under full load, all eight cores. And in gaming, it is much less than 80 watts. So I can comfortably cool this thing with a tiny, adorable air cooler, whereas a lot of people are getting AIOs to do the same thing. In this case, with the fastest gaming CPU in the world, you don't even need a very good cooler for it. So the only reason you'd really need those AIOs is if you're getting what, like a 300 watt CPU or something, and you consistently have that 300 watt CPU under max load, or you have a case, like a, say like a mini ITX case, where you can't squeeze in that big air cooler. All right, now this might be the challenge. Look. Wait, after all that. And you have to use an AIO in order to route the tubing in a different way and get the heat away from the system. But for most people, you're probably wasting your money on water cooling. And speaking of the best gaming CPU in the world, do you even need that? Let's talk about CPUs. So on the bougie buyer PC, we did put in the 7800X 3D, but what I'm here to tell you is this CPU is still $370 and you probably wouldn't be able to tell the difference most of the time is if you got a $270 CPU instead. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about CPUs. Most of the time right now, AMD is actually providing the best value with CPUs and that's because AMD CPUs are probably guaranteed to get at least three to four generations of CPUs on these motherboards. So that means you won't have to upgrade your motherboard, most likely, if you want to upgrade your CPU for the next time you want to upgrade. Whereas Intel CPUs, they're on a dead platform right now. Now, let's look at the AMD CPUs in specific. So the 7800X 3D, at $370, it is a very good value. But what I want to interest you in is there can sometimes be some underlooked deals out there. The 7800X 3D is an eight core processor, but the 7900X has 12 cores on it. And it's only going for $10 more right now, or $12 if you wanna get real picky. $12 difference for 50% more cores. When we look at it here, I'm gonna hide my camera. This is from Hardware Unbox. They tested the 7800X 3D. You can see a 1080p and a 12 game benchmark with a 4090 in it. So CPU limited results here. The 7900X got 196 FPS, and then the 7800X 3D got 221. And if we really break that down, it's only like 10% faster. That does provide a lot for you. And then you have 12 cores. So if you want to use this CPU in another program other than gaming, then you can have more cores to work with. It's just kind of a bonus for the same price as you could look at it from a different perspective. The 7800X3 has eight cores. You know what other CPU also has eight cores? Yeah, the 7700X and is going for almost what, what is that, $70 less than the 7800X 3D. Go look at the hardware unbox data again. The 7700X got 199 FPS in these games, okay? And then the 7800X 3D was 221. Yeah, the 7800X 3D is faster. You know, it's only 10% faster and it costs more than 10% more at this price point. So yeah, the 7700X is still a better deal in terms of gaming performance. And do you really need every drop of gaming performance from your CPU? To be honest, most people don't have GPUs that can take advantage of all that CPU. And even when, you know, this 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 CPU would be slower than the 7800X 3D, the 7700X is still gonna be getting like over 120 FPS or so in that game. Now, another interesting point about Ryzen CPUs is there's actually two different versions of them. And let's kind of take a more in-depth look at the 7900 and the 7900X. Functionally, the only main difference between a X variant 
and a non-X variant is the power draw. You see here the X one is 170 watts and the non-X one is 65 watts. And that means that the X one can boost up and have a higher base clock than the non-X CPU. But what might surprise you is this is completely irrelevant. Because if you look here from Gamers Nexus, you can see that they review the 7900. And if you just turn on this funny little thing called Precision Boost Overdrive, this means that your CPU will draw as much power until it gets thermally limited on your motherboard. And what you can see is that the 7900X is right here, and then the 7900 with Precision Boost Overdrive is right up match neck, neck and neck with it. And if we do look at the power consumption here, we can see that the 7900 and 7900X, they're both drawn around 200 watts when precision boost overdrive is enabled. Yeah, you basically get the same CPU, but for less money. And what's interesting about the non-X versions of these CPUs too, is the X versions don't come with a CPU cooler because they assume that you're gonna need something else to cool it because they draw more power. But this one, if you don't want to buy that CPU cooler that we we're talking about earlier, this non-X one is cheaper and it comes with a CPU cooler. At the very least, you're getting a backup cooler in case the maybe you buy a liquid AIO one and they, the pump fails on your AIO. Just funny thing because pumps can't fail on the air coolers, but they can fail on liquid coolers. Love you liquid coolers, they're awesome. So yeah, those are some suggestions is to really look at um, what kind of deals are out there on CPU. Sometimes you can get a lot for very similar cost. Now let's look at the GPU. We all want the Aorasis, the ROGs, the Arrows, or whatever the heck MSI is calling their top end GPUs. We all want those ones, the best GPUs in the world, right? But what's funny is the difference between a low end AIB graphics card and a high end AIB graphics card is pretty marginal nowadays. Even the Founders Edition cards from Nvidia, they look amazing and they perform great nowadays. So in these builds, what we did is we went th with the RX 6800. On the bougie build, it's $500, but on the budget build or the more budget conscious build, it's $380. And functionally, these GPUs are gonna perform about the same. They're, ba they're both RX 6800s. And what's really funny is if we look at the actual GPU here, so let's exit out and is going for that $500 price point. This is the one that we picked out. It's $500. You can just get another tier of GPU. The RX 7800 XT is $490. This card is faster than the 6800. So it really makes you wonder why the heck would you spend more with the, the lower end skew of graphics card to get less? Actually matters about a graphics card is as long as it doesn't perform like garbage, as long as it doesn't sound like garbage or cool like garbage, it's probably going to be fine for you. So I would put that performance up at the top of the list with the price of the card, but overspending on it doesn't seem like it's that worth it. And the other things to consider is, is it going to fit into your case? And then aesthetically, it's probably at the, the bottom of the list to just make sure that it kind of fits in your build. And aesthetics could, could not cost a whole lot more to get. Say for example here, um, when I got my RX 7900 XT, right? There was a white version of the graphics card that only costed $10 more than the other, var the black variation of the card. And I was like, eh, I wanna get a white card. It costs $10 more. I'm gonna go ahead and get it. It can be a situation where like that is like, even if you want a card for aesthetics, sometimes there is one in that range that is pretty close to what you'd want anyways. So when it comes down to what we could actually save with our build, you can save, at least in our case here, a cool, you know, 120 bucks, depending what GP you buy, and you aren't going to notice the difference. I promise you. You know, like most cases the, the GPU sits where you can't see the fans anyways, like aesthetically, it doesn't even really matter a whole lot. So just wanted to point that out too. And the same applies with motherboards. Like I just recently got another motherboard because my old B351 from 2017 didn't quite have enough features that I needed from it. So I got an X570 top tier motherboard that has literally everything I need on it. 
And this motherboard was under $200 used, but a new one is just a little bit over $200. You could be somebody that goes out and gets a motherboard like an ROG Strix one for those who dare. Game first, work later, join the Republic of Gamers. <coughs> I know this is an Intel motherboard here, but I just thought it was funny, so I wanted to show it. But like my X570 one literally has everything I need and comparable ones to it, you know, that have all these flashy features cost $300 plus, whereas mine was under $200. There's a huge difference there and you can save a ton of money on a motherboard. And I guarantee you too, if we look at the builds that we have here on the essentials build, I'm only going with a B650 motherboard for $190, brand new. So like this board is plenty enough. I actually own this board. It is good too. Now, another thing that people like to talk a lot about with, and the VRMs are the things on the motherboard that deliver power to your CPU. So it is important that they stay cool. And there's so many people that get very worked up about VRM thermals so that they don't overheat and limit how much power can go to your CPU or cause a fire possibly. I don't think that would happen, but things are pretty smart now, but it maybe, maybe it could burn down your house. I don't know. This is some testing done by Hardware Unbox. He rounded up 35 B650 motherboards. So AM5 Ryzen 7000 series boards. Now this is testing on a Ryzen 7950X. So this is like almost a 300 watt CPU. When it comes down to it here, he did all of this testing. Anything, any VRMs, that are under like 80 degrees are perfectly fine. Okay, so even these ones, and I hate to say it, these aren't good at numbers coming from the Asus Prime CPU uh, motherboards, but at the same time, if you're on a lower power CPU, these are probably also fine, which is kind of crazy. Like so many people get worked up about VRM cooling and that it's super important, but it seems like nowadays so many motherboards are overbuilt for this type of stuff. And that runs perfectly fine. I was actually using my 200 watt Ryzen 5900X processor on that really cheap B350 motherboard from 2017. And that CPU, was running perfectly fine there too. I would just make sure you do a little bit of research on your board to make sure it doesn't have some glaring issues like where hardware and box tested here with the Asus Prime motherboards. Yeah, you don't, you probably don't want to get those if you have any other option because it just don't do that well on VRMs. And that's how like when we, when it comes to these builds that we can easily save another like, this is an ROG Strix motherboard for $260 versus this gigabyte gaming one, you know, we can just save like $70 just like that. This one might surprise you. Storage is another area where you can save a lot. Well, let's look at what we did on each of these builds. So the bougie build, it was using a PCIe 4.0 gen, gen 4. That's what that means. Two terabyte NVMe SSD for $170. But if we look at the budget build for $110, $112, so that is a $60 price difference between these drives. Both are two terabyte. Both are reliable drives from reliable brands. But this one on the cheaper build is PCIe 3.0. From my personal experience, that old motherboard I had, it only had Gen 3 PCIe, and then my new one I got has Gen 4. I was able to experience a Gen 3 to a Gen 4 drive because I do have a Gen 4 SSD in my computer. Uh, the only thing I really noticed was that Windows booted up about two seconds faster. But the thing is like on both of the drives on the Gen 3 one and the Gen 4 one, Windows was still booting up like in 10 to 15 seconds. It's not a difference maker at that point in time. And I actually made a, a much older video now, especially for my channel, comparison between SATA SSDs and NVMe SSDs or Gen 3 PCIe drives. Less than a quarter the speed of the PCIe Gen 3 drive. On the SATA drive, I, most of the time I couldn't even tell just from like normal stuff. So this isn't to say that you shouldn't get a PCIe NVMe drive. You might as well have some future proofing and all that stuff. What I'm trying to say is that like, even though on paper, the numbers sound extremely large and that these are going to be big differences with faster storage. It isn't as big of a deal as you might think it is. As long as you're not on like a hard drive where it like takes so long to find things on the drive, then you're probably going to be fine on most SSDs and stuff like that. Because I mean, the reason you don't notice a huge difference is because most 
games on PCs nowadays, they are not even optimized to use really fast SSDs. I think Ratchet and Clank is the only game currently on PC that has a fully realized version of direct storage on it, which is using high speed SSDs. And then most like Windows things just don't you utilize a full really fast NVMe drive quite yet. You might want to future proof and get a gen 4 drive if if it does pick up steam. I wouldn't be too concerned and in our case we can save 60 bucks getting a much cheaper drive here. And the last area is cases and what you can see here that we actually went with the NZXT H5 flow on the budget case on the budget build. But we actually went with the same case on here on the more expensive build. Yes, you can spend a lot on a case. There's many cases that go for multiple hundreds of dollars. And yes, you are probably wasting your money on those cases, but I can't really also tell you what case is going to be right for you. And I'm not even saying that all these other options I've showed you are right for you. I'm just giving you options. A case, what you really need to look for in it. Does it fit everything you want to put into your computer? Does it have a ni nice amount of growing room in case you did want to upgrade certain things? You have some prospects in mind. It, does it fit where you want to put it? When it comes down to it, my stinking Fantex P300A that I got for $50 back in 2017. Honestly, this would be completely fine if it wasn't for this fat ass NVIDIA power adapter that sticks out the side of the GPU and doesn't let me put my side panel on. This case still holds everything I needed to hold and I don't really have a reason to upgrade my case. So it really depends on your situation. I would recommend not to overspend so much on a case because when it comes down to it, at least for my case and probably many of your guys' cases, once you put all your stuff in there, you're probably barely ever going to look at it or really see it. And that kind of is the entire theme with this entire video. A lot of this stuff is done to be flashy and you probably aren't going to see it. And that's the same with cases. For me, I actually have my case under my desk. I barely ever see it, which you could maybe call an excuse. I actually really like the blacked out look of my case. It looks stealthy. It looks badass and stuff. Once you build your computer and you admire it for a few days or a week or so, why does it matter what case it's in? It sounds so cool at the front. Maybe you make a good YouTube video. That's true. Content brain right here is getting in mind. It doesn't matter a whole lot. So a lot of these hundred dollar cases, there's actually a lot of good options. I did show the NZXT H5 Flow. This is a very good case. It gives nice airflow to your PC. There's also the Corsair 4000D, highly recommended case for $100 with probably a lot of parts that you would want to put into your PC. That's how you're wasting money on your PC, you goofy goobers. We just saved $400 on this PC and with 95% certainty, if I sat you in front of either one of these pieces and you couldn't see it, I, I guarantee you wouldn't be able to tell a difference. Even if you could see the PC, once you got playing a game, do I press the giant on switch? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think they want me to do that. You think they're waiting for something? Dude, shut up. I hate your ironic <laughs> ass, bro. Dude, just fucking hit the goddamn switch. browsing the web, or even getting some work done, would you even care about the minimal differences in the look of the PC or the, the sounds that it might make? As long as they're pretty close, it's gonna be fine. In this whole video, I know there's gonna be so many people out there that are like, hey, we already know this stuff. We know that this stuff is overpriced. This video is not for you. This video is for people that don't understand the differences between these things and that spending more doesn't always equal more. You could put that extra money saved to getting a more powerful CPU, a more powerful GPU, get more storage on your PC, like things that you would actually notice in your day to day using your computer instead of spending it on all this flashy stuff that doesn't really matter a whole lot. You probably don't need that high end model of GPU or that high end motherboard with all the bells and whistles that says work later, play now on it, join the Republic of Gamers. And there's probably gonna be people that are watching this and they're gonna be like, hey bro, you're just pocket watching. Why are you gonna judge what other people are gonna build in their computers? Hey bro, you can buy whatever you want with your PC. I don't care, it's your money, your PC. Don't go posting your PC online 
like it's a good deal. So value your money, y'all. The only thing you should really be spending on your PC is the waifu. Come on. Peace.